My dear brothers and sisters, do you experience a lack of joy at times? If you're everything like me, then I'm sure each of you do. I think we all have times of frustration, of unhappiness, of lack of joy. Especially in our world today, with so many unknowns, social isolation, COVID-19, struggles that are present in your everyday life, even without sometimes a worldwide pandemic. And the third Sunday of Advent is a Sunday of joy, Gaudete. And having come thus far in our journey, the church says to us, as the prophet Nehemiah said to the Israelites, go and enjoy, do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. However, after today, we must continue our journey with a new zeal and expectation. So we're going to dive into what joy actually is and how we can feel it even in the toughest of circumstances. So often, my dear brothers and sisters, we confuse ourselves between happiness and joy. And therefore I thought we'll begin by just making this clear distinction on this Gaudete Sunday or Sunday of joy. So happiness, first of all, is temporary, whereas joy lasts. Happiness is caused by external circumstances or experiences. Joy springs from within and is an internal experience. Happiness is not present when we are in the midst of a storm. It just vanishes. But joy brings with it a feeling of contentment and confidence which can take us through a storm in our life journey. Happiness is a blurred emotion. It can mean different things to many people. Whereas joy is a conscious commitment to be happy, to have a sense of gratitude and contentment despite life's challenges. Happiness if often, is just a feeling, whereas joy is a choice. And finally, happiness does not bring eternal peace. But joy is a sense of deep inner peace given by the Holy Spirit. And joy comes from choosing God, whereas happiness comes from choosing perhaps worldly ways and materialistic things. In difficult circumstances, my dear brothers and sisters, especially with what's going on in our world right now, it can be a bit hard to be joyful and happy. But yet, there is the choice that we make. Forget about happiness. Let's at least be joyful. We can live a more joyful life, most importantly by fixing our eyes on Jesus and His greater plan for each one of us. In every circumstance, we are being invited to see the bigger picture. And when we can do that, then we forget about our troubles and our worries, which are but temporary and but passing. The word joy, or a variation of it, is mentioned in scriptures many times. And therefore, joy is obviously important to God. In the first reading, we heard Isaiah reminding us that God is the source of our joy. Isaiah 61 10 I rejoice heartily in the Lord in my God is the joy of my soul for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice during this Advent time of looking to God as the answer to our deepest needs I especially like this line in my God is the joy of my soul we could see that line as an examination of conscience. Is God really the joy of my soul? Are we centered on God? And therefore let us place God first because that is the only way for us to have joy and experience it in our lives. Mary's Magnificat 
A song of praise when she visited Elizabeth, which we just sang as our psalm today, also reminds us that God is our joy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Luke 1, 46, 47. And then, the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age to those who fear him. Luke 1, 49 to 50. Again, during this Advent time, my dear brothers and sisters, a time of looking to God as the answer to our deepest needs. I especially love the line in our responsorial psalm, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Our second reading, taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, urges us, and I quote 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. The emphasis, in all circumstances, we're invited to give thanks. Is it really our vocation to rejoice all this? How can we rejoice all this? When we put our trust and hope in God, then even in difficult times, when there is a storm at the surface, we can always rejoice deep within. In the Gospel today, John the Baptist was asked, Who are you? And he declared, I'm not the Messiah. And he went on to say, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. John 1, 26 and 27. So in John the Baptist, my dear brothers and sisters, we see a model for our own spirituality. Knowing our smallness and nothingness, that we are not worthy to untie even the sandal strap of the Lord. John pointed away from himself to Jesus. Humility like that of John the Baptist in the Gospel today brings joy. Greed and pride bear much of the responsibility for most of our problems in life, anxieties and worries. But humility leads to God. The humility of John the Baptist pointing away from himself, pointing towards Jesus. He came to introduce the light to the world. And if you and I, my dear brothers and sisters, can live in that light and experience it in our lives, we will be joyful always. Nothing, no circumstance, no storm can ever diminish the joy that we have because our lives are centered and focused on God. So the major difference between today's gospel and that of last week rests simply on the fact that there are accounts from different writers, Mark and John. The message remains functionally and ontologically the same. It is still from the voice that cries in the wilderness make a straight way for the Lord. Because we've taken different paths that have drawn us away from God and His love, that's why we have stopped experiencing joy in our lives. And the invitation from John is to make straight that path, come back to the Lord, experience the joy which each of us is being invited to. So why is this reading and call being repeated this Gaudete or Joyful Sunday? It is for the purpose of emphasis. It is to remind us that though we are given a little time today on this third Sunday of Advent to relax and rejoice, that the clarion call is still there. Make a straight way for the Lord. In other words, our preparation continues. So it is a way of keeping us alert so that we do not lose focus of where we are actually going to. It is not Christmas yet. The joy of the Sunday foreshadows the fullness of joy that Christmas will ultimately bring.
God bless and do have a Jesus filled day.